Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast, Episode 589. Genetics behind why some people develop long haulers after COVID and other people do not. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about anti-aging medicine. Your host is Dr. Kathy Moffat, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging. Dr. Maupin is the author of The Secret Female Hormone, the seminal work about testosterone replacement therapy for women, and Got Testosterone, the award-winning book for men that helps men choose the most effective and safe form of testosterone replacement. These books are available on Amazon or from Dr. Maupin's office at BioBalance Health in St. Louis and in Kansas City. Dr. Maupin's office is currently accepting new patients. Welcome to the BioBalance HealthCast. Today we're going to talk about um, some of the side effects or long-lasting effects of getting the COVID virus, actually having the the disease, the problem of getting the COVID virus, and what makes you less likely to have long haulers disease, which is a a side effect of, of getting the virus, but which affects maybe your heart or affects some other part of your body because the virus attacks that area and damages it. Uh, Not everyone genetically is at risk for long haulers disease. And and how we know this is that at the beginning of the pandemic, 23andMe um, is a way to find your own genetic diseases, things that you should protect yourself from uh, by giving a saliva test to them They'll give you your genetics and all the diseases that you're a carrier for or that you actually will have or have the genetics for, uh, which makes it much easier for you to um, worry less and don't, you don't have to worry about the things that you didn't get from your grandparents or your parents or, or whatever you think runs in your family, and then concentrate on the areas that you actually do carry in your genes and protect yourself from those diseases. Do what you can to not get them. I'm all about preventive medicine. I always have been. Preventive medicine is actually going to be the most effective medicine in the next 10 to 20 years because all the other medicine that we know is so technically expensive and medicines are so expensive that it is very important that we keep ourselves healthy. And in this time of pandemic, it's very important that we prevent ourselves from getting COVID or getting some kind of side effect from having gotten COVID. A recent study by the researchers at the Translational and Clinical Research Institute in Newcastle University in in England found that one gene uh, was protective against uh, COVID-19 symptoms and the development of long haulers from the uh, COVID virus, and that is an HLA gene called DRB104-01, and that was found very in a high number of people in Northwestern Europe, which is, of course, Britain. That, that genetic, one genetic allele actually protects people from getting COVID and getting bad symptoms or having it damage their organs. That's very, that's, if you have that and you know it, then you don't have to be as afraid of getting COVID and worry about the fact that you might get some terrible disease later. I have to tell you that even though people talk about, oh, you know, COVID actually can cause death, it can cause pulmonary emboli, it can cause uh, inability to breathe, it can it can attack your heart. You can you can have a heart attack from it. Um, COVID is a severe and terrible illness for some people. For other people, it's like I don't even know I have it, but I've got antibodies. So the most important thing we can do now, now that we have a vaccine, now that we have a treatment for COVID, is to determine who should be more careful and or not go out in public or always be masked and who doesn't have to, based on their genetics, also based on their lifestyle choices. So I'll talk about the genetics first, because that's what 23andMe has done its research um, on in the last year and a half. They've come out also with some of these other studies done by other uh, organizations 
who have been looking at genes and looking at people who are sick, looking at their genetics and see what is common to those people who get really bad COVID and what is not common. So this is something that um, I actually was really excited about when um, 23andMe sent me an email and said, would you fill out these forms about your experience with COVID and the COVID vaccine? And, and, and they would periodically send me uh, a questionnaire. And they did that to everybody who had signed up and sa saying that they would participate in their scientific discoveries. So I sent them whatever my experience was with COVID. I was exposed to a number of people. I didn't get it. And this is before the vaccine. Um, I then had a vaccine, uh, J&J, &J, and then I had another booster just six months after that. And, um, and then, right after that, I tested positive for COVID, but I never had any symptoms. I was a little tired. That was it. So that's, that is the best, that would be the best outcome, obviously. But I'm not advocating anything for anyone but myself. Luckily, I had made the right choices in terms, I did get vaccinated, I did wear masks, I did try to stay away from, I stayed home when I had a positive COVID test, I didn't interact with my staff or, um, or my patients, so um, at least we did on, online, but we didn't face-to-face. Uh, -face. So luckily, I had, the, I had the right genes and the right decision. Now, for other people who don't know what their genes are, don't know what their HLA type is, we can go to something really basic that you might know about yourself, and that is that um, if you have O blood type, they have found that O blood type people have a uh, less severe response to the virus and less severe response to the vaccine. So fewer vaccine side effects, fewer um, COVID uh, long haulers problems. They also found that bees were next in line in terms of having uh, a better response. And then on the other side of the aisle are people who have blood type A and AB, and ABs and As had a worse response to getting COVID and to getting uh, long haulers from, uh, from either COVID or the vaccine. So um, that is a simplistic and not very specific genetic way of looking at whether you're at risk or not. You can, um, you can get your genetics done by 23andMe, and they don't tell you what, which group you're in. <clears throat> uh, I think that that has to do with uh, just some kind of government strategy, but I have no idea. Um, for, exa for example, one of the things that public health does is, public health is looking at a big group of people, and it's one size fits all, and they say, everybody has to do this, everybody has to do that. Well, that makes about as much sense as giving me the same dose of medication at 132 pounds with my husband, who is 240, and giving him the same dose of, of medication or antibiotic. I mean, that's kind of how medicine looks at things. They, they look at all of us like we're the same. But in this century, we are now realizing that we're not the same. We all have different we have different pluses and minuses. Some of us will be immune to this. Some of us will not be immune to that. So we are all different, and we need to have specific answers. This is the beginning, I hope, of having genetics determine what kind of things we should be treated for and we should how, how we should be treated. The very first step would be if they would just treat us dose-wise <laughs> by our size. I mean, we do that, or we should do that with thyroid. Thyroid is, is treated based on your weight, or it should be. Not every doctor follows that. But there's a formula that uses your weight to determine how much thyroid you need. And that makes sense. But that's the only kind of medication that I know, besides maybe chemotherapy, that actually does that. The outcome of that, that um, I guess, uh, over, the fact that medicine overlooks that is that whenever my husband gets sick and takes the, same, takes the dose that is recommended, he never gets better. He has to take two courses or three courses of it when they should have just given him two. To a, a double dose at the on the first uh, first round because of his size, it's just impossible that we could need the same dose. So that's the first step. The next step is genetics. I guess we should try for the easy stuff first. Um, so 
If you're not Western European, and that doesn't mean, if you're Western European, doesn't mean you're going to be uh, immune to COVID or that, that you're going to um, not have any reaction to the uh, vaccine. But if, you, but if you are, there is a, a lower risk of you having the side effects. If you're type O blood type, lower risk. Um, the alternative is if you're not Western European, which I'm not, but I have a B blood type, I'm, I'm a little better than uh, A blood type, and, and I have, must have some other gene that didn't allow me to get as sick as I could have gotten. Um, it, you can kind of, you have to look at yourself and determine the risk for you and your family, basically. Um, you can make an educated decision about vaccine and the use of masks and the use of um, not seeing your uh, extended family, that type of thing, based on genetics, when we know them, or if you can use this kind of rough, uh, rough outline that I give you. But um, it would be nice if we had our HLA type, because they do have five different types, and two are, uh, they found, 23andMe has found that they're lower risk, and two that are higher risk uh, for getting uh, the disease and long haulers. The one thing you can control, however, even if you can't get your HLA type, you can always get your blood type, uh, is that you can control your lifestyle. We already know that if you have uh, a lot of exposure to the sun and have a good vitamin D level, uh, that you're at lower risk of getting a severe reaction or a severe uh, response to COVID. We know that if you are at normal weight, you're, if you're not overweight, then you are at lower risk of getting a, a poor response or a long hauler's response to COVID. If you eat properly whole foods, not fast foods, not junk food, not high sugar foods, but whole foods instead of the junk that most people eat, then you're at lower risk of getting a side effect or a complication um, of COVID. If um, you exercise every day, that decreases your risk. Even if you're overweight and you're exercising every day, that helps you have a better immune response to COVID. So you can control some of these things. You should take your sup supplements, and I always advise my patients to take vitamin C, 500 to 1,000 milligrams a day, um, to take zinc, because zinc goes into the cell and fights viruses from the inside, 15 to 50 milligrams a day. If you take zinc, you have to take copper. So two milligrams to um, six milligrams of copper based on the dose of zinc. Uh, if you take, uh, you should also be taking uh, quercetin, which is a supplement. You can buy, all of this is over the counter. And quercetin is uh, kind of like, Basically, it protects the cell from viruses of all types, so that helps you with that. Uh, I also, methyl B complex is always good to protect you from um, any kind of uh, cancer or virus or bacteria. And if you are older than uh, 55 and male, you should get your testosterone free, testosterone tested. If it's low, have it replaced. If you're over 40 and female, you should have your testosterone replaced because what we do every day is replace testosterone, and that's a foundation of our trying to prevent disease of all types because testosterone stimulates your thymus gland to make T killer cells, T helper cells, your immune cells that kill viruses and bacteria and cancer cells. So it's one of the ways that we can make all our patients a little more resistant to disease. Those, and I'm not saying specifically COVID, I'm saying all diseases that are communicable or cancer. They are, le pe our patients are less at risk when they have been taking testosterone for a period of time. So there's all kinds of things you can do with, with your uh, supplements, what you can do with your lifestyle. You can protect yourself. You have to use self-control. You have to plan it. Uh, you can look at your blood type and determine your risk there. I think over the next few years, we'll be learning more and more about our own genetics and what gen and and if we are at risk or not for some of these next viruses that come down the pike because there's always going to be another virus. So we can't just spend our lives in our house. So we're going to have to be smarter about this and not use a one-size-fits-all. So to be smarter, get healthy. The one thing you're in control of is that. 
Try to exercise, try to eat right, try, take your supplements. Do all of the things that you can do to stimulate your own immune system to protect you. And don't assume everything is without risk because then you'll, you, you'll be disappointed because almost anything you do medically is, does have risk. So prepare yourself for that. And then when and if you get va vaccinated, and I would always suggest if, you're, if you haven't been vaccinated, I'd go get a test, which you can get, to see if you're immune already. If you're immune already, then why take the risk? You've already been exposed, you've developed immunity on your own, and that is not any, any worse than getting vaccinated. Vaccination is just trying to do that for you without causing you to be sick. So those are my suggestions in this very tumultuous time. And um, if you are healthier, you have a lower chance of getting long haulers just because your immune system is working better. So that is on top of uh, your genetic risk. So I hope this helped you make some decisions. I hope it helped you. Um, I am not, not politically motivated. None of this is political to me. This is all about doctor-patient discussions. And if you have questions, you should talk to your doctor and get the facts of what is your risk and what, it, what is your benefit for getting vaccinated versus not getting vaccinated, dependent on your own medical condition. That's very important. And your doctor is being educated by Journal of the AMA. Every week we get, this is a new side effect from the vaccine. This is a new side effect from the virus. This is your protocol for pulmonary emboli with the virus. Um, that type of thing. So your doctor should be well informed of what is happening when patients get vaccinated or when they get uh, COVID themselves. And the vaccine does save lives. So don't forget that. I hope you can join us again next week. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth.